Welcome to Fix It for Josh's Sake. Today I want to talk about drive gears on a 1972 Articat Link snowmobile. This will actually be a universal subject we're talking about here that will uh, also be useful on like 1970 Articats all the way up to probably 1974 Articats. Then they started to move to an aluminum chain case, went with a little different uh, gearing system. But let's get started as we fix it for Josh's sake. getting to be fall here in Minnesota and so I'm working on this links getting it ready for when the snow flies I'm gonna pull this hood up here get a closer look at this chain case this is where my mind is focused on today right inside of this is the chain and so we want to talk about what goes on in here to make sure this chain case is healthy and ready to rip through the snow this winter the way this chain case works is there is an eccentric bearing inside of here. These are the tensioner bolts and you loosen those up and you can create more tension on the chain or reduce tension. You don't want your chain too, too, too tight. And then when you tighten those bolts down, grease everything up and you've got a nice chain working properly in there. Inside of here, we have some gear ratios. Typically it's one to two. This says 19, then this one says 39. That's kind of the concept, almost like a, you know, 20, 40 kind of idea so that you've got uh, one rotation, uh, two rotations here to one rotation down there. Now back in the day, these old motors didn't have a ton of horsepower. This one here is a 24 horsepower motor. Uh, some of them are only 20 or 18. Some were as high as like 29 horsepower. So what we would do in order to get a little bit better uh, torque in this chain case here is maybe play with these gear ratios. Uh, you could run a 17 tooth gear at the top or a 15 tooth gear at the top, which would make you take off crazy fast, but then you can't go as fast on the top end. Or maybe you would change this uh, 39 up to a 41 and it would do kind of the same thing. Your your takeoff would be faster, but your top out would be uh, a little bit slower. So this uh, 19 to 39 is standard, pretty stock. Some guys move it down to a 17 to 39. That's pretty comparable as well. But like I said, changing teeth would help this little 24 horsepower motor get up and go a little faster. Might not go as fast at the top end, but you might have fun of taking out of the taking out of the turns with a, a little bit lower top gear ratio. I'm a visual guy, so I like to see the way things stack up. When I was talking about a 1917 or 15 tooth top sprocket, that's what these look like. So here's the 19 I was showing you in the video. Boom. Okay. Then we got a 17. See, looks like that. A little bit smaller. Okay. And then here's the 15. And you can get a pretty good idea of how that reduced diameter would give you a lot better grab on that secondary clutch shaft and help pull that sled forward. But of course, when you lose that many teeth, you also can't go as fast on the top end. So you gotta, you gotta decide what your, what your goal is. If you're curving a whole bunch and you're ripping through the woods, or if you're on a track that's like turn left, break, turn right, okay, take off and then stop, then something with lower teeth will give you a lot of fun. But if you're on straightaways, let's say like a railroad bed, perfect snowmobile trail that goes for miles, you might want to run a 19. Heck, you might run, want to run a 21 because you're going to wind up and take off, right? Either way, it's all fun to be out there on the snow and, and enjoying the weather in the winter. But to shift gears here, no pun intended, I'm going to set these aside, kind of uh, beat that dead horse. But I want to talk about what a healthy gear looks like. And the reason why is because these gears are from snowmobiles that are over 40 years old. And they have stood the test of time. They've had some fun. They've taken some abuse. So I want to show you what we're looking for when we're bolting a good gear onto the secondary clutch uh, drive shaft or the dr drive axle down at the track. What do these teeth need to look like in these gears so that we're not wasting our time and having chains rip off while we're riding this winter? 
I'm a fan of good news first, at least in this situation. Uh, if you look at the top of these teeth, they're very big. They're rectangular. And you get a good shiny flat surface on them. This is the best gear that I have pulled off of a snowmobile. This is a nice big surface to the top of the, each one of these teeth. And the spacing in each one of these teeth looks nice. Everything's good. There's no chewed off, ripped up, gouged out sections on these gears. Okay, let's contrast that now by another gear I have here. And if you look at each one of these teeth, they're very shiny and they're rounded out and they're gouged off really bad. And you can see how that chain had been riding actually halfway off, I would assume, to this side of the gear and just chewing the top of that, every one of these teeth right off. And this one, I would never bolt that back on a sled. If I opened my chain case and saw this, I would remove it immediately, probably throw the chain away as well. Um, that's a whole other inspection process to make sure a chain is good or not. But this is not worth bolting back on. And so keep in mind, like I said before, you need flat, nice flat surfaces. These are gouged and rounded. These are not going to give you any favors this winter. Now from there, we have a varying amount of uh, likability or dislikability. These particular teeth, while they're not gouged on the top, they're very rounded off. You see how each one is real pretty and rounded? Pretty in a bad way. That's pretty bad. <laughs> so if your teeth aren't flat on the surface and don't have an absolute machined tip to them, they are wearing out and no longer going to be doing you any favors uh, when you're running down the trail. And then this one here, I would say this is runnable. Uh, we have little squares. Each tooth has a machine surface that's flat, but it's a square, which tells me that these teeth were, are kind of starting to wear in a little bit because in the very first gear I showed you, it was a rectangle at the end of each of these because the teeth were pretty wide yet. And these are squares, but there's no gouging happening or anything causing me to be concerned about the way this is tracking or how it will hold onto the chain. But I am nervous that in time, let's say in a couple seasons, this would uh, start to give way and become a rounded tip. So I'm going to, if I was going to bolt this on my machine, going to be happy. Looks pretty good. I'm also going to be looking around for a new one with a little more meat on the tip of each one of these teeth. Going back to the first one I showed you, I just wanted to be sure I had a solid comparison. See how these tips are real wide, machined real nice, clean steel. Uh, even though this is the same year uh, cog, this one has a lot less miles on it, a lot, a lot less abuse, and will last nicely. So this is the one I'm going to bolt on the drive axle of my snowmobile. And then I get to test and tune and play around with these different uh, teeth ratios to see how I like... Uh, Taking off a little slower, but being pretty stock, or taking off a little faster, maybe, and and uh, you know that. Woo! We better hang on because we're we might slide off the back of the seat. Well, not really, but it's not like those sleds are that powerful. Anyway, this is the uh, the little spiel I wanted to give you today as we talk about how to spot a good gear, a, a well working gear. A, set of gears that have a lot of life in them. And also, when you're swapping out these gears, don't just be like, oh my God, 15 teeth, perfect. I want to try one of those. Make sure these teeth have a lot of meat on them as well. Because uh, not as often, I don't see these wearing out as quick, but these could have a little abuse on them and turn out to have uh, rounded off tips or squares and that kind of thing. So pay attention to your top gear as well. Well, I hope that helps you out a little bit as you work on your vintage Articat snowmobiles this, this fall, getting ready for winter. Uh, I know I've learned a little bit about these over the years. I had the luxury of a friend giving me a stack of these, and that helped me compare and contrast and see the ones that were junk, which I give away on Marketplace. Somebody turns them into some steampunk art or something like that, weld them into, weld them into a little guy that looks cool. I don't know. People like to make art out of this stuff. Uh, I personally consider it an amazing work of art as well as a work of engineering to, uh, you know, know that in 1970 there were people casting these millions, machining these right here in Minnesota, making amazing machines that brought us a ton of fun and still bring us a lot of fun. So 
Thank you for watching as I work on this and get my head around it and maybe teach you a little bit from what I've learned as well. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and subscribe or share it with a friend. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment if there's another way that you like to check your gears and, and inspect them to make sure they're going to last another season on your snowmobile. Thank you for watching as we fix it for Josh's sake.